Hello again, I'm Joe Berry and I work for Visuality Systems. In this video, we will continue looking at Wireshark more in detail. In particular, we will look at the various ID fields that are part of all SMB packets. We will be using the Wireshark PCAP file that we created in the previous video. So let's begin. So let's open the PCAP file that we created in our last video. We'll double click on the icon of that file, which brings us into Wireshark. So now let's apply the filter that limits our view to just SMB traffic. SMB or SMB2, enter, and there we go. If we go through and look at the packets that we see here, we see the negotiate packets, the setup packets, some activity that takes place here, and then we see that we do a session log off. Subsequently, we do another session log on. Remember, this is Windows File Explorer that is doing this on the client side. We do a negotiate and a setup, entering our username, our password goes in here, and now we are logged in. The next command here is the one that is of interest to us. Here we are connecting to our share, client test three. The command that does that is the tree connect request. The response can be found by looking in the side of the SMB2 header, and we see that it's at packet 109, which is the very next packet. Let's go to that packet, and we see that we successfully connected to the client test 3 share. If we open up the information that's down here, we see some interesting information, such as the access mask. This allows us to know what kind of access we have to that share client test three. We note here that with all the ones, we can do virtually anything. However, this is very good for debugging a problem where you try to save a file, for example, in a share and the save doesn't work. Why might it not work? Well, you can use Wireshark to look at this mask and see that, for example, perhaps you don't have right access to the share. Let's minimize that. And now let's take a look here at the SMB2 header. I want to focus on a few of the fields that are found here that will be used throughout our access to this file. The first one is message ID. The message ID is very useful in associating requests and responses. This is how Wireshark knows where the request is, where the response is. The message ID here is three. And the response, if we go back, is also three. If we were to look at the very next request, we see that is four. And the response to that, if we click here, is also four. It doesn't even have to be next to each other, but that is the response to the request. That is how all clients associate requests with responses. Now, the message ID starts from the beginning after every negotiate protocol. So it's possible that if you do a filter of a certain message ID, you will get multiple results back, not just the request and response, but perhaps multiple packets, depending on the number of logons and log offs that took place. Let's now take a look at the next ID, which is the process ID. The process ID is defined by the client. It is defined in here in the negotiate protocol request. Here, we specify the process ID that is to be used, and from that point on, the process ID does not change. It defines the process on the client side. If we now go to the third ID, which is the session ID, we see that this ID is created by the server. It's created in response to the session setup request. Note here, the session ID is initially zero. It's not defined. But the response from the server gives us our session ID. What is this ID? This defines a logon based on user and password, essentially an authentication indicator. If I log on to the same server, but with different user names and passwords, then I will get different session IDs. The last ID that I want to mention is the tree connect ID. This associates 
a packet with a particular share. In particular, we have a tree ID here of 1, which represents our client test 3. Note that if you close a share and then reopen a different share, you may get the same tree ID, and so it doesn't guarantee that if I search or filter only on tree ID equals 1, that I will always get client test 3. But it does help to remove extra noise that will at least limit the amount of packets that you see. Let's actually take a look at how that might take place. I want to look at all activity associated with tree ID 1, okay? So I'm going to right click. I am going to apply this as a filter. And there are two items here that are of particular interest. The first is the and selected. So if I click on this, I will have a display filter of SMB or SMB2 and the tree ID of 1. Alternatively, I can say I just want tree ID 1. So let's actually pick this filter and see what it looks like. And there I go. Now, as you may recall, we actually created that tree request over here at packet 109. So all of these earlier packets really have nothing to do with us. However, until we see a tree disconnect further down, from here on out, all this activity here is related to the client test 3 share that we have. In the next video, we're going to look at the information related to the file that we created in the share and how we renamed it and added information to it. Thank you for watching this video.